Well, hey guys. I'm not going to really do an educational video today, just more of a uh, test video, a power test. I want to see what the output power of this little Pioneer receiver is. It's an SX1000. Pretty good shape. I did have to do a few things to it though. And I'll explain that in a minute. I think it's rated at 25 watts per channel into 8 ohms. It's like a very basic bottom of the line receiver. Uh, has a digital tuning 5 band equalizer and not a lot of inputs as you can see CD VCR I think this came out in the late 80s. Here's the back of the unit. can only deal with 8 ohm loads, so we can only test it with 8 ohm loads. Also going to look at this receiver chassis here out of a Astrosonic, or I'm sorry, a Magnavox Astrosonic console. This is an old unit from the late 60s, 68 or 69. What I find kind of interesting, it uses a uh, fully complementary output stage. Back at that time period, it was usually quasi complementary output stages the early days of the transistors. I mean the actual early days were in the early 60s. I know there were some transistor amps in the 50s, later 50s, but transistors really didn't you know, start coming out until around I don't know, 62, 63. And by 67 or so they pretty much uh, taken over. You didn't see tube receivers after that. Of course there could have been an odd one or two of them, but let's move that wire. There's the output stage. You can see the resistors, the um, emitter resistors. And that little can there is a diode. And I believe those resistors with the fins, the cans, there are um, the driver transistors. It is a single supply amplifier. Tuner stage. One thing that's interesting, it uses a lot of these little uh, circuits that are soldered on, the little uh, hybrid circuits there. I'm not sure what they are. I think they're capacitors and resistors. Probably no active devices. Like this one here, there's several transistors, at least four transistors surrounding it, resistors and capacitors. So. Not sure exactly what they're doing there. I'm not crazy about it because if this thing needed a part, you're kind of stuck unless you, you know, get that coating off and reverse engineer that part there. Well, let's take a look inside this receiver. And we're in. Just three screws off the back, pop the top, and then we have a fairly small power transformer, you know, 25 watts per channel, 8 ohms only, it's not going to be a very substantial amplifier, 3300 uh, microfarad filter caps, and our output our output device is one of these hybrid power packs 
I'm not too keen on these things, mainly because of their obsolescence. If this one blew up for whatever reason, it would be hard to find a replacement part. And a, you know, a discrete circuit, it's easy to find a transistor or you know the parts to repair it. No problem with the sound. I mean, some of these have very good performance, very good distortion performance, and all that stuff. Yeah, it's your digital tuning phase lock loop tuner. So there's uh, not too much to it, just IC chips. All right, there is the phono preamp stage. Now I did have to do some repairs to this. This relay here for the output, you know, when the, you first turn it on, it clicks in a couple seconds and connects the output to the speakers. Well, this was dirty and uh, the channels weren't coming, you know, both the channels were kind of flaky, wouldn't come up. And if you see, there's a little tab on each side of this regulator, and I was able to get a screwdriver on there and pop that top. And then I used deoxid cloth and pulled it between the contacts and cleaned it up. Seems to work pretty well. You know, it's not too difficult to find a replacement relay. The contact spacing and the voltage and all that stuff is pretty common, but I don't really want to put money into this receiver. The other problem I had was the volume control. This slider here came loose from the potentiometer. It was just moving freely. But what happened is this, uh, for some reason, this board pulled back like that. So, I just snapped it back in and it's fine. And the other thing is to spray those contacts. They were a little bit noisy and flaky. But everything else is quiet. The balance control and these equalizer potentiometers, they're pretty quiet, so no problem there. Okay, well, that's enough of talking about these receivers. I'm going to hook them up and test the power now. All right, if you follow my channel, this is your typical power test. Because it is a stereo device, we have to do both channels driven. So I have 8 ohm loads connected. I did put a little heat sink on there because these will get pretty hot and scoping one of the channels my source here and of course we'll do both channels driven before clipping and let's get this thing going and we'll turn this up and it's starting to clip right there We'll bring the volume down just before what's going on there. Maybe our volume control needs sprayed. I will use that as the value. 16.2 volts. Okay, so um, I'll just pop 16.2 in, square it, divided by 8. 32.8 watts. Very good. Gave you a little bit of headroom here. When I test these things, general, generally I find that they do give you some headroom, power headroom. Of course we're only testing at 1 kilohertz. Not doing all the uh, frequencies. But it's, you know, clipping point I find is usually the same. So yeah, it's uh it's giving us decent power. Okay, time to look at the Magnavox 
Astrosonic receiver unit. Well, I had to switch over to this because this thing just doesn't create enough volts to reach clipping with this thing. So I had to find where the tape input is and connected that up. Make sure both channels driven. And here we go. Ignore the distortion because this thing has horrendous distortion. That's why I normally don't like to use it. We're clipping there. about 8.1 volts okay 8.1 squared divided by 8 8.2 watts that's all we get from this thing now this thing can deal with 4 ohm loads so I'm going to hook up 4 ohm loads and see how it performs and this is hooked up across the supply rails. 34 volts sitting idle here. Now let me turn on the the uh, function generator. You can see it pulls the voltage down to 28 volts. Okay, let's move on to 4 ohm loads. Okay, 4 ohm loads. I was lucky because one of the channels was dead shorted. It was running at full power for two or three seconds. Didn't blow up. So, pretty lucky there. By the way, you can hear it because I have this little speaker connected and this coil so I can you know I was making sure both channels were going and everything so alright let's go ahead and get the measurement six volts Well, okay, 636 divided by 4. 9 watts. Oh, look who came to join the party. It's Snickers. 9 watts, 4 ohms. Let's see what happens to the supply as we... Pulls it down to about 27 volts. The output seems to be a bit current starved in this thing. I don't think they're even using the Darlington output stage. I think they're driving directly right to the uh, output transistors there. I have to have a schematic. It's kind of hard to follow the layout of that thing, but that's what I'm seeing anyway because there's only two of these heat sinked transistors and one goes to one channel and the other goes to, it, to the other channel I'm not seeing any other power transistors telling me that they're direct driving the output stage with the class A amplifier stage which is kind of interesting but you know it's not a very high power amplifier or anything like that. You know, we're only getting 9 watts max, both channels driven before clipping. Well, that's about it of the power test. Thanks for watching.